Learning to love yourself, it is the greatest love of all. I was fascinated with that song when I was a kid. And I wasn't sure if it was the melody or Whitney Houston's angelic voice, but I learned one year ago that what resonated with me was the 11 word chorus, learning to love yourself. It is the greatest love of them all. Now I know what you're thinking, how is learning to love yourself so difficult? Well, for me, it took decades. You see, when I was growing up, I was a happy-go-lucky girl. I had a personality that looked something like, I had that sunshine in my pocket, had that good soul in my feet, and I just wanted to share this with everyone. I can remember that most of the time, wanting to share it, my gestures were often ignored. Like this one time when I was driving with my mother to my grandmother's house. We would take the car and go for a ride and then we would have to catch the bus. And on this bus trip, I remember I felt on top of the world because I was wearing this beautiful yellow dress with white polka dots all over it and my mother had curled my hair in all these beautiful Shirley Temple curls. And I just wanted to share these vibes with someone. So looking directly in front of me was a woman and she had such a stale look on her face. So I decided, you know what, I'll give her some sunshine and I smiled. And she looked back at me and she did. And so I thought, okay. And so I smiled again. <laughs> and she rolled her eyes. And so I said, wow, seriously? You know what? If she's that bold, I'm gonna be bold again. I smiled again, but by the time I went to smile the third time, I realized she was looking out of the window. Well, there were two things that I learned early in life. One, that not everyone was going to embrace my happy-go-lucky spirit. And two, I definitely didn't fit in. But that did not stop me from trying to gain everyone's acceptance. So in school, you would see me at recess. Oh man, we need somebody to be it. Hey, don't worry guys, I'll do it. And in the lunch line, Kimberly cried. I don't have enough lunch money. Hey, don't worry Kim, I bought extra money. I'll do it. And at home, when my mother got off work late, who left these dishes in the sink? Mom, I don't know, but I'll clean it up. Thanks, Elizabeth. You see, I was the most dependable person you can imagine. Now, what's the great question? Elizabeth, did you get what you were looking for? Sometimes, if I jumped through enough hoops. But most of the time I was devalued, I was disrespected, and I was taken advantage of. And this behavior began to magnify radically in my adulthood, creating several toxic relationships. I was displeased by this time. And I began to do some soul searching. I began to ask myself some questions. Why me? Why is it that I'm such a great friend, so dependable, and what I get in return is disrespect? I couldn't understand. I had a dialogue that was, my inner dialogue was a victim state of mind. I can remember a conversation with a very dear friend of mine. And my friend would say to me, you're such a great friend. And after this argument, I asked her a question. Friend, why is it that you claim that I'm such a great dependable friend, yet you treat me like dirt? And the answer to that question was an answer that was gonna change the course of my awareness and alter my life forever. Her answer to me was, why do you let me? And in that moment, I couldn't answer the question. I thought about it for months. Why do I let him? Why do I let you? Until one day it came to me, it was like an epiphany. I have a choice. I can choose how I allow people to treat me. I cannot choose how they treat me, but I can allow how I allow them to treat me. And that was empowering for me. That was something that I used, and I was ready to use this power. 
You see, by this time, I had endured an abusive marriage for four years, and I was exhausted. I was tired of looking in the mirror, seeing bags under my eyes. And I was tired of standing over the stove for hours at a time, only to have food smashed in my face. And most of all, how could I forget that last traumatic incident where I pray, God, if you let me live, I promise I'll leave and I won't come back. And with this newfound mindset, I decided that I was going to move on. I grabbed my three children, ran for safety to the nearest police station, and was escorted by Detective Freeman to the nearest shelter for abused women and children. One week before Christmas, with just the clothes on our backs, I walked away. I didn't know what I was getting into, but I knew what I was walking away from. Now, I felt like Mighty Woman. I did it, finally. I moved on with my life. And that lasted until my kids went to sleep because that shelter was quiet and the silence began to torment me. I began to have to face someone and I was afraid, I was embarrassed, and I was depleted. But at this moment in time, I was forced to face someone I had neglected that I did not like. And in this pain, I was pushed through a threshold. And in this moment, I decided with this choice that I was going to begin to invest in myself what I had invested in everyone else and that I was going to begin to look deeper inside of myself for what I looked outside of myself for. And my fellow Toastmaster, Madam Toastmaster, I'm here to encourage you that if you have found yourself in a position where if you invested in yourself, in others, neglecting your own self, or you're looking outside of yourself for something that is inside of you, I am a living witness that learning to love yourself it is the greatest love of all. Madam Toastmaster.